So we worship a God of grace, thank God. And then we read this passage of doing something we know that we're all capable of doing and hearing the dire consequences. And it makes you swallow hard. So let's start there and work back. The consequences of being a stumbling block to someone else's faith are dire, going to Gehenna. And that's how that's the, that's the word in, in the Greek that is translated as hell. It's actually, Gehenna is a place, it's a garbage dump outside of Jerusalem where they would burn all the trash. If we let this passage of scripture stand on its own, and then it's like that feeling, right? Just wait till your father gets home because you're in trouble, right? But if we put this passage of scripture into the larger context of scripture and what we know of Jesus, that Jesus would pray, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do and for God so love the world that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world. Then we realize that Jesus just wants us to take very seriously the act of being a stumbling block to someone else's faith and how we act as doorkeepers of the faith. This is no small thing. This passage or something similar to it is, is also in Luke. I like the Luke conversion better because it starts with, hey, we can all do this. We can all be stumbling blocks to one another. So therefore, we need to call each other out on it, which is a whole other sermon, how to do that. And then finally, but we have to forgive one another again and again and again and again. But in this version of Mark, he ends his pep talk, not with condemnation, but with the, what the end game is to be at peace with one another. I'm saying these things so that you can be at peace with one another. So now let's go back to the beginning. Jesus is still holding a baby from last week, right? And you know, how, how are we going to, how are we supposed to, and the, the, the disciples have been arguing about who's the greatest. And so you need to you know, serve the least of these. That's how, right? And then John, God bless him, said, hey, Jesus, we just saw somebody healing in your name. And we told them to stop because they're not following us. And with, with you know, because I'm from Long Island and I can be a little snarky. You know, I can, I can imagine Jesus going, all right, everybody, let's, let's just take what John said. What's wrong with that sentence? Where should we start? Us? Because they're not following us? I, I think, you know, we're following Jesus. Not you, not us. Jesus. And then Jesus says, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Right? Wow, there's power in Jesus' name. And whoever is not against us is for us, which is different than what we usually hear. And that's also in scripture. But in this instance, whoever is not against us is for us. Challenging John and the disciples to draw the circle wider. First, they're vying for a position about who's the greatest. Now they're trying to close ranks around Jesus. Only we understand Jesus. The early church and the, the community to which Mark is writing, they used to fight about who's truly the followers of Jesus, who got it right, who has the, 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 the pure gospel, whose teachings are truest to him. Do we do that? How do we explain all our different denominations? Here's a joke. And, and but I, it was amazing to me how easy this joke was to find. I just, I Googled Baptist joke. <laughs> and this was the first one that came up. And it, uh, this joke was by Emo Phillips. And part of this article is like, he, he, he wants credit for it. So Emo, you get your credit. And he tells the story. Once I saw this guy on the bridge about to jump, and I said, don't do it. He said, nobody loves me. And I said, God loves you. Do you believe in God? He said, yes. And I said, are you a Christian or a Jew? He said, a Christian. I said, me too. Protestant or Catholic? He said, Protestant. I said, me too. What franchise? 
He said, Baptist. I said, me too. Northern Baptist or Southern Baptist? He said, Northern Baptist. I said, me too. Northern Baptist conservative or Northern Baptist liberal or, or, or Northern liberal Baptist? He said, Northern conservative Baptist. Me too. Northern conservative Baptist Great Lake region or Northern conservative Baptist Eastern region? He said, Northern conservative Baptist Great Lakes region. I said, me too. Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1879 or Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1912. He said, Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1912. And I said, die, heretic, and I pushed him off. Yeah. How do we interact with one another? Do we ask ourselves, are they for Jesus? There are plenty of Christians who think that their brand or flavor, of their franchise of Christianity is the only brand, flavor, franchise of Christianity. Years ago, I uh, met, a, met a Baptist, not to, not, not to bash Baptists, or, you know, uh, but we were looking for a place. I live in a very hilly part of New Jersey and was looking for a place to for my kids to learn to practice riding their bikes. And Baptist Church just happens to have a nice flat parking lot, and there's no one there. So we pulled in, pulled out the bikes, and didn't realize that there was a manse behind the church, and out comes the pastor with tracks to, to tell us about Jesus. And, um, and my husband, and I'm just and I'm like willing him in my head, don't say it. Don't say it. And he goes, oh, oh, no, we're Christians. Sorry, my, my wife is a pastor. And I just knew. And he looked at me and he said, are you saved? I didn't say a word. And, and, Car and my husband looked at me and he's just like, you could just tell. He goes, oh, oh, yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. You know, da, 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 da. And then he said, Pastor went away, and he goes, do you want to leave? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I was just, and he's like, are you angry? I'm like, who asks the pastor whether they're saved? Right? we got, we got some work to do, right? And I, I told that story like three or four times over the years. This was a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure that that Sunday, because uh, I talked about it in worship the Sunday afterwards, and I'm, Darn sure he had to as well. I asked this woman pastor whether she was saved and she didn't say anything, right? And I, and I just thought, oh, yep, we both, <clears throat> we got a lot of work to do. Do you have a litmus test for who are the real followers of Jesus? What are the essential tenets? And keeping it real, how many times have you said to yourself in the last several years, I don't know how you call yourself a Christian and fill in the blank and vote for so-and-so, or how do you be pro this or anti this? And this, that's where the rubber meets the road. What are the essential tenets? What are we, you know, what, what needs to be professed? Or is it through actions? Remember, Jesus says, whoever is not against us is for us. And then he, he expands the circle even more. Whoever offers a drink because of the bear the name of Christ will by no means lose their reward. Which makes me think of Matthew 25. You know, when the separation of the sheep and the goats and um, uh, the question of you know, when you gave drink to the thirsty, food to the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, or visit those in prison, took care of those who are sick, you did it for me. And they could, when, when, Lord, did we do it? You, you know, and Jesus says, when you, when you do these things, you, you're doing it for me. I did a funeral years ago where there was, there was no one to talk to about this person. I didn't know about their faith. The funeral director just told me that, that she was a nurse. And the only uh, folks were there for the funeral, but that, there was nobody to give me. The, her, the, the person that she was closest to was her caregiver at the end of life. And 
I, you know, I prayed on it, and what I came to is that Matthew 25 passage saying, I didn't know her, but I know that Jesus did. Because she made a lifetime of caring for the sick and bringing food to the hungry and, and giving drink to the thirsty. So back to this idea of stumbling blocks. Let's all of us just stop worrying so much about who's in and who's out. It's not our job. Who's helping people? Who's offering water to people regardless of faith or creed or anything? Be at peace with one another is where we finish this passage. Be at peace. Who are our people? The ones seeking to bring healing into the world. The ones seeking to bring peace. And we're not always going to do this well. We will be stumbling blocks to other folks. And when the Holy Spirit convicts us of that, you know, of our arrogance and our stinginess with the love of God, it can feel like a millstone around our necks. Because God forbid, God forbid we should turn anybody off from, from being a follower of Jesus Christ. So Lord, and we prayed it before, but Lord, forgive us. And then you know, send people to undo, undo it, because you do that. <laughs> Thank you. And in the meantime, you know, we're not going to worry so much about who's in and who's out and who's first and who's last. We're just going to get busy offering cups of water to the thirsty and being encouraged by all the good folks in the world who share and this, and this is the challenging piece, but Jesus says this, being encouraged by all the good folks in the world who share the heart of Christ, whether they know it or not. Amen.